Hey guys, Magnus Robert here, and I was told that you, yes you, have not learned your ABC yet. You failed to learn your ABCs in the A to Z characters. So I'm going to have to bring it back to make sure that you have learned your ABCs. And that is with the Simpsons tapped out A to Z NPCs. That's right, we're doing NPCs today because... I managed to scrape together an A to Z for NPCs. Now, despite the fact I've done this list and I've created it, there, there actually isn't an NPC for every letter in the game, sadly. So I had to be creative with some of them, is all I'll say. So, yes, this is your A to Z for NPCs. Now, um, let's get into it. So, A is for Annual Gift Man. That's Annual. That's an A. So, Annual Gift Man was obviously first added in some Christmas update. <laughs> Who knows which one? And he actually appeared in the episode with John, Homer's Phobia. And he basically is John's toy that he has. Now, he walks around, you tap him, and I think like a little missile comes out of his mouth or something. Yeah, he's a pretty cool dude. Pretty cool NPC. How would I rate it? I'd give it two robot parts out of three. Yeah, Annual Gift Man, that's your A. So A is for Annual Gift Man. Your B is for Big Claw. That's B, 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 Big Claw. Now, Big Claw is actually... Part of me loves Big Claw because despite him being a tapped out exclusive character, he is awesome in the fact that when you tap him, it's not just a normal NPC. You tap him and you get some XP or you can get some, I think, some cash or potentially... You also can get a pill for the uh, John's Pharmacy thing that we have in the Springfield Heights. So it can ha actually help you progress in that. And also, you can tap Big Claw three times, I believe, within like eight hours or something like that. So I think you have like a good chance of getting an extra pill every time you click him. Which makes him a little bit extra because the Heights... A little bit extra or a bonus feature because the Heights thing is really annoying. So <laughs> it's cool to... Uh, at least progress a tiny bit in that. So that's why Big Claw is getting the B. And that's B for B -b -b Big Claw. Obviously, he was also added in the Thanksgiving update. C is for Capital City G -g -g Goofball. But that's the but the letter we're learning today is not G, it's C. So it's C -c Capital. So this is an NPC, which I strongly disagree should be an NPC. I really think the Capital City Goofball should be a character. I think he is prominent enough, prominent enough to deserve tasks. So I'm actually against this guy being an NPC. But regardless, he is still, at least at this point in the game, an NPC. So we must note, we must note that and put him on the list. He's definitely one of the more recognisable NPCs. So that is C for Capital City Goofball. And of course, he was added in the Friends Prize. Moving on. D is for D -d -d Drone. So this was an NPC that was first added in the sci-fi update. Now, this is unique in the fact that this is neither an animal nor a human. It's a robot. A bit like the annual gift man, though, I guess. I probably should have mentioned that for him. And yeah, the drone is pretty self-explanatory. He's just a drone that goes around. And he's got some little guns on him. So he's pretty cool looking. So that's D for D -d -d drone. We have E. E is for Egg Council Guy. That's e -e -e Egg. So Egg Council Guy, it was actually first added in the Easter 2014 update, I believe. And honestly, is pretty unique in the fact that Egg Council Guy is actually a Stonecutter member as well, which is kind of funny. Now, I personally am fine with Egg Council Guy being a, a character, uh, sorry, an NPC and not a full playable character, but I don't know, I've heard arguments before. Maybe you could argue that the Egg Council Guy should have tasks, but I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with Egg Council Guy. Pretty cool character. So that's E for Egg Council Guy. Moving on. F is for F -f 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 Frog Prince. Frog Prince is another sort of unique character in the fact that he is an NPC, but when you tap him, you get like a little dialogue box, and there's a few different alternative things that you can get when you tap him. And I think he was the first character to do that, so that makes him unique. They did they did give 
the same feature to a few other NPCs later on, but he was the first one to actually get that, so that puts him pretty unique in my books. Now, he was first added in one of the earlier Treehouse of Horrors. I forget exactly which one. I'm going to guess 2013 or 2014. I think it was one of them. But yeah, he's a very awesome character, so that's F for the f -f -f Frog Prince. Moving on. G is for Gooseus. So Gooseus is a character that part of me kind of feels like maybe should have been given tasks and quests, but then part of me is like, mm, maybe not. Gooseus, of course, is JG's famous goose mascot thing. Um, yeah, Goose obviously comes in the JG deal uh, with JG in and his mansion, and it was originally added in the Great Fat Speed episode tie-in. So that is. G for G -G -G Gooseus. H or H is for Handsome Pete. So Handsome Pete, that's H -h 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 Handsome Pete. Handsome Pete was first added in the Squidport update all those years ago when they first added the Squidport to the game. And of course, he has donuts and you can buy him and he goes on your little Squidport. And when you tap him, he does like a little thing with that instrument that I forget the name of. Accordion? Is that what it's called? Accordion? Yeah, he does the little thing with the accordion. I think there's an argument that Handsome Pete should have tasks, but I don't know. I'm also kind of happy with him being an NPC. So that is H for Handsome Pete. And obviously it does look a little bit like Krusty. Haha. <laughs> I is for Imaginary Bear. That's it, it. Imaginary Bear. So the Imaginary Bear was first added in the 20... God, 2015 uh, um, Christmas Takedown, I think. I think it was 2015. It was the one that added Maggie anyway. I, I'm, I'm always... Or is it 20, 2017? I think that was 2017. I'm not even sure. But whatever. It was first added in a Takedown for a Christmas update. The one after Maggie was added. And it was kind of added as almost, I always felt like it was almost a souvenir for that update because the bears were obviously the tappable thing. So you get the little bear and you tap him and he sucks on the on the pacifier there, which is pretty cool. I actually really like the imaginary bear. I think it was a nice touch as a nice almost like souvenir for that update, like I said. So yeah, I was pretty happy with the imaginary bear. So that's I for the imaginary bear. J is for J -j -j Juggler. So this is another Boardwalk performer that was first added in, of course, the Boardwalk update. I forget if this one is premium or cash. Doesn't really matter too much. So I think this one's premium. And basically, when you buy him, he goes around on your squid port, juggling around. And when you tap him, he juggles his little things. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple, but a pretty awesome little feature to have. I actually really like the Boardwalk performers. I think they were a real nice touch to the squid port when it was added, so... Uh, big thumbs up for the juggler. That's J for the j -j -j juggler. K is for King Snorky. That's K -k -k King Snorky. This is another character that sadly I think should have been given tasks. I think it's actually a travesty that he hasn't been given tasks. Now I think there's an, a nice fix here. That's in the files. Rename this character to Dolphin Soldier. And add a new character called King Snorky. So this character just becomes Dolphin Soldier or whatever. Whatever. And you can then maybe redo the quest line or just have the same quest line and say that this is King Snork. It would be like an error, but I wouldn't care that much. But just add this, re add this character as Dolphin Soldier and then add a new character called King Snorky. I think they really should do that personally, in my opinion, because King Snorky is one of those characters that really deserves tasks. Up there with the Capital City Goofball and Snowball 2. I think those three are the ones that are the biggest miss. Missed opportunity for me. Especially considering we've got characters like the vicious monkeys that have tasks. But the but King Snorky doesn't. What a joke. Yeah, so I think King Snorky really should have tasks. But currently he's just an NPC. He was added in the 2013 Triads of Horror, I think. I think it was 2013 or 2014. One of those anyway. And when you tap him, he does like a little dolphin noise and he does a flip. That's pretty cool. Moving on. L is for L -l -l Leprechaun. So the Leprechaun was first added in the 2013 St. Patrick's Day update. And he is a premium item and he comes with the well. The magic well thing that you can place. And when you place the Leprechaun in the well, you tap the Leprechaun. He does like a little fist thingy. And then a bunch of cash or MP or XP comes out. And he was the very first character to do this feature. So in that respect, he is a very unique NPC. All NPCs before him never did that. So 
he gets massive props. He was the first NPC to actually have something rather unique about them, so yeah, he gets uh, mad props for that. Now, of course, he was first, yeah, we're talking about when he was first added, and yeah, he's a, a feature, he's a guy who appears quite a few times throughout various Trials of Horrors and St. Patrick's Day things and all that. He's appeared quite a few times, and I actually also think there's an argument to be made that this character should have tasks too, personally. Yeah, there's a lot of characters, a lot of NPCs that were added earlier on that I really think deserve tasks, and now uh, the current state of the game. And I think it could be cool if in like an update they were just given tasks. They've done it before with Jub Jub, Stampy, and Santa's Little Helper. Those were characters that had either one or two tasks, and eventually they gave them full fledged out tasks. And so I think it could be cool for the same thing to happen with the Leprechaun. Santa's Little Helper is. R extra unique in the fact that he was just an NPC. He didn't have tasks at all. And they came around and they gave him tasks. So I really think the same should be done for the Leprechaun and all the other characters. But that's L for L -l -l Leprechaun. M is for Mojo Helper Monkey. That's M for Mojo. So the Mojo Helper Monkey is another NPC, again, that I think probably could have tasks. I'm like... 50-50 on this one, though. I, I think I'm fine either way. When you tap him, uh, he, of course, looks all tired out and distraught. <laughs> and he kind of breathes heavily. He was first added in the Easter update as well, I think. As well as, obviously, the other character who was added in the Easter update. Who am I talking about? Um, Egg Council Guy? Yeah. He was, he was added in the Easter update as well as our Egg Council Guy. And, yeah, I think he's a cool little NPC. Definitely pretty awesome. So that's a big thumbs up for Mojo the Helper Monkey. And that's M for M -M -M Mojo. N is for the Northern Irish Leprechaun. That's N for Northern Irish. So the Northern Irish Leprechaun obviously first appeared in The Simpsons. In I think it was the Sex, Pies and Idiot Scrapes episode, I think. But basically, you he comes in the... He came in the St. Patrick's Day... God, I want to say 2014 or 2015. It was one of those years. And he came with the pride of... I can't say it. Ustler? Ustler? Ulster? Is it Ulster? Ustler? One of those things. Anyway, a place in Ireland. And of course, he's the Northern Irish Leprechaun. He's the Protestant um, Leprechaun, if you will. And they have like a little fight, which is pretty cool. Now... I personally like this one, but it felt like a bit of a repeat of the actual Leprechaun. I think it could have been cool of this guy. I think that this guy should remain non-playable. But the Leprechaun, the actual Leprechaun should be given tasks. I don't know. I think that would be a cool solution. So at least you still have the cool thing where, you know, when you tap this guy, you get some XP. Or I think cash. I think there's cash on an XP. It might just be XP, though, for this one. I forget. But yeah, that could be a cool little feature. So you still have that cool feature, but then give our give our boy the leprechaun some some tasks and quest line. But that's N for Northern Irish Leprechaun. Moving on, O is for Octo Parrot. That's o Octo Parrot. Octo. So the Octo Parrot was is actually I think the one of the newest NPCs on this list anyway. And the Octo Parrot was first added this year in the New Year New You update which was the very first update of this year. Of course, he comes with Mrs. Frink at the Screaming Monkey's Laboratory, whatever it's called. And yeah, he's an NPC. When you tap him, he does like a little... I think he does like a little squawk, doesn't he? I think a dialogue box comes up. I forget. But yeah, he's pretty awesome. I like him a lot. I think he's definitely one of the more unique-looking NPCs, and I think he's definitely one of the better NPCs that we've got this year. So that is O for Octo Parrot. P is for Pokey, and I wanted to put Pokey on this list because he gets the award for the smallest character in the game. Now, Pokey is... Is he a hamster or a gerbil? I'm not even 100% sure. He's one of the two, though, and my god, is he small in the game. He's a tiny little thing. You can barely see him sometimes, but when you tap him, he makes like a little, little noise, which is cute. Uh, yeah, I like him a lot. I think he, he was first added, I think, in an episode tie-in, right? years ago he was added and yeah i don't know i think he's very unique in the fact that he's like the smallest character in the game by far he's he's miniature and actually he's kind of scaled up already so that's p for p, -p, -p, -p pokey 
Q is for the Quirky Prospector. And this is where I got a little creative. Because there isn't actually any NPC call with Q. So I had to... Um, my kind of rule for this is going to be if there's no character or costume that has the Q or character, costume, NPC, building, whatever. If there's no, if there's none of that that has a Q, then I'll find like another one. So say for example, King Snorky, I could theoretically put him in as S because he has the S in there. So I'd like change it around. I'd be like Snorky, but King Snorky, you know. But when I get to this position where there's not even a character that has a Q in one of their names. So if they were called like, if this guy was actually called, I don't know, the Great Prospector, I could put him as Great or I could put him as P. So I could put him as G or P. But there was literally zero NPCs that have Q as like a first letter in one of their names. So I had to create an adjective instead. So that's what I'm gonna do in cases like this, in rare cases like this. So Q is sadly for the quirky prospector, which is not his actual name, he's just called the prospector or prospector. But uh, yeah, whatever. He's a quirky looking dude though. And I thought it'd be cool to add a Wild West character. So yeah, the Q is a quirky dude, a quirky prospector. The prospector was first added in the Wild West update. It, well, the Wild West takedown update. And yeah, he's an NPC from that update. Now he also appears, I think in the Buck McCoy episode, right? He's in the uh, Quitters um, place, the, the alcoholic cowboys uh, AA place. But yeah, he's a pretty cool dude. So that's Q for quirky prospector. R is for Ralpho Cop. So this is another NPC that was added this year, and it was added in the Rise of Robots update. A very awesome little NPC at that. Now I'm a little disappointed that they weren't consistent, and they had the other robots be added as NPCs. But hell, I'll give Ralpho Cop some credit. I think he's very awesome. He goes around, and when you tap him, he fires his little gun. So he's a cool little robot. I give him mad props. I think he's definitely again up there with Octoparrot as one of the better NPCs this year. So that is. R for Ralphocop. S is for Snissnissness Snowball 2. So Snowball 2, I'm sorry, Springy is not here. I know S could have been Springy, but part of me wanted to put, I couldn't not include Snowball 2 and include Springy instead. So sadly, it just comes down to Springy having a common letter. So S is for Snowball 2. Now, Snowball 2 is. The biggest character that I think deserves tasks. More so than King Snorky, more, sno more so than um, the, nor the Leprechaun, and more so than the Capital City Goofball. Because Snowball 2, listen, is like the biggest character that, that is an NPC. That, and for that, I think it shouldn't have tasks. Now, also, as an extra thing, the other Simpsons pet, Santa's little helper, does have tasks now. So I don't know. I personally think Snowball 2 should have quests, quests and tasks. I think there is an easy fix here, and that is adding Snowball 5, which in the the same episode as the the um, Ironoid Grunt, is it called, or something like that. The same episode as the Robot Rumble episode. There's a B plot with Lisa where her cats keep dying. Snowball 2 dies, then Snowball 3 dies, then Snowball 4 dies, and then finally she gets Snowball 5, who she decides just to call Snowball 2 to make things easier. Basically retconning that entire episode a little bit, but also making like a little joke about, you know, status quo sitcoms and stuff, especially with the whole Skinner principle and the pauper joke, because they make one a joke to that. Now, I know that technically you can consider this almost non-canon, but it is technically considered a canon episode, so I don't think it's explicitly been, explicitly been said to be non-canon, like the principal and the pauper. So, I don't know, personally, I think it would be awesome if they were to add Snowball 5 into the game and then give Snowball 5 quests and tasks. But alternatively, they could just give us Snowball 2 uh, some tasks, which they could do as well. So Snowball 2 was first added in the Friends Prize update, where uh, obviously you can unlock her or him. I'm still confused to what Snowball 2's gender is meant to be. But um, Snowball 2, you can add, you unlock them, and then you tap Snowball 2, and they basically just cough up a, a hairball. So, yeah. Definitely a character that I think deserves some tasks. God damn it. 
T is for t -t -t Tumbleweed. So Tumbleweed is the most unique out of all the NPCs, in my opinion. Because Tumbleweed is not a robot, not an animal, and not a person or a monster. Tumbleweed is a literal tumbleweed. And part of me loves the fact that they added this as an NPC. It's just so funny. So, I don't know. For me, I'm like... Loki, I Loki love Tumbleweed, so Tumbleweed gets a big thumbs up. Obviously, first added in the Wild West update. I just had to give some recognition for this absolute chad of an NPC. Definitely my favorite MP, my favorite, my most favorite NPC in the game. I don't care. I, I part of me is like, oh, maybe I should like the Spuckler children more because they actually earn cash. But yeah, they're cool. But like Tumbleweed, man, Tumbleweed is just. On another level, okay? Best NPC. I don't care. Springy, Springy can eat his heart out. Tumbleweed is here. U is for unicorn. That's royal. <laughs> so, it's the royal unicorn. But, like I said, I would use the second name, part of its name instead. So, U is for unicorn. The royal unicorn, to be specific. So, U is for U unicorn. So, the royal unicorn was first added into the into the Simpsons verse update. And it was added as an act prize. So, it was free. Not really the most interesting of NPCs, in my opinion. You tap it, and sh the unicorn gets on their hind legs, basically. That's pretty much it. And does a little neigh. It's actually the third unicorn we've got in the game. We've obviously got the tunicorn, which throws up rainbows. And we also have the unicorn wizard, which is a full playable character. So it's the third unicorn. So for me, I'm like all unicorned out at this point. I think the, the unicorn is cool enough, but... Not the not the most amazing of characters, in, in my opinion. Not the best NPC. But that's you for Unicorn. V is for the Vern Bully. I mean, Bully Vern. <laughs> again, I had to do this again. So, the Vern Bully, uh, or B Vul Bully Vern, is a very, very cool NPC. Alongside the other NPCs that were added during this, uh, the Magic update. The Magic Triata Horror update. Because they ha actually can earn you... Um, decorations so basically they sit at their little npc layer place and you release them to be in order to unlock decorations to get this process you ha do have to go through a quest line we have to do you have to make the wizards capture them and then you have to i think there's another thing you have to do so it's a long process to get to that point but eventually when you get to it they start to earn you decorations from that update which i think is a very cool feature now i personally do consider them npcs because Although they do have a quest line, they are technically non-playable in the same sense that a character is. But there's an argument you can you can make an argument that they're, that 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 they're in like a separate vein. That there's like a separate. They're almost in like their own separate category. They're sort of like halfway in between being playable and not NPCs. But I just consider them NPCs. I think that's easier. So yeah, that's V for the Vern bully. I mean bully Vern. <laughs> Moving on. W is for Whitney. So Whitney is, of course, one of the Spuckler children. And you earn the Spuckler children by making Brandine pregnant for 90 days, I think it is. And after she gives birth, she gives birth to one, two, and three. Whitney is one of those children. And Whitney is unique in the fact that she can actually earn you cash. So essentially, she pickpockets people. And I think it's every, I think it's every six or eight hours, she, a big cash thing uh, spawns above her. You click it, and you get some cash. Uh, so yeah, Whitney is pretty cool in that respect. So W is for Whitney. X is for the Xyloid Tree Stash. So again, I had to be creative and get a get an adjective because sadly there was no um, character beginning with X in any regard. I couldn't I couldn't get one, which is sad. So the Tree Stash was first added in the episode tie-in for the Surfsons, I believe. I think I'm pretty sure and was added just before the magic update and was also a character that you could capture but I don't think this this one doesn't actually earn you um, doesn't earn you any decorations this one doesn't but you do have to capture it and stuff so it's kind of similar to the bully burn a little bit so yeah pretty cool he do, he looks like a big tree he's got a big mustache which is pretty awesome he was the first Xyloid character, and Xyloid, if you didn't know, is a adjective that means resembling wood or having the qualities of nature or wood. Um, and 
It's kind of a trick because he is literally wood, but whatever, we'll use that adjective anyway. But yeah, pretty cool. He was the, like I said, he was the first tree-like. And then we obviously got, uh, what's his name? Xylem, is it? Xylem, the other uh, sentient tree-like being. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. That's the Xyloid tree stash is X. Then we have our Y, and Y is for Yupricorn. That's you, Yupricorn. Now, I feel like I've cheated a little bit because the Yupricorn was originally in my A to Z characters list that I did years ago, but I never did an NPC list. And for that reason, I feel like I can negate that rule just because the Yupricorn isn't being repeated in the top 10 character list. He's being repeated in the top 10 NPC list or the A to Z Tip top NPC list, I misspoke. But yeah, I don't know. I'm cheating a little bit, but I, I couldn't have like another one of these where I had to like really, really stretch things. I was like, oh, screw it. I can't be bothered trying to be creative. I'm just going to add the Yupricorn. So yeah, the Yupricorn is our third little Leprechaun type thing. And he was first added in the Treehouse of Horror. Not Treehouse of Horror. The St. Patrick's Day update in, God, 2014, 20... No, it was 2015 or 2016. One of those two. And he comes with the Shamrock Cafe. When you tap him, he has... I think he does the same thing as the other Leprechauns, right? He just exposits some, like, XP or cash. And he kind of says something about Plasma TV when you tap him. So, yeah, that's the Yupricorn. And then finally, RZ is for a zombie that does some shuffling. So, there isn't actually an NPC with a Z, if you didn't realize. But there is plenty that have a Z in their name. And I decided to go with a zombie, of course. Why, how could I not? And I think the by far the coolest looking zombie is the shuffling zombie, in my opinion. So that is, that's why I'm giving this to the shuffling zombie, or the zombie that does some shuffling. So that's Z for Z -Z -Z zombie. So I really look up and think the zombie is cool. He actually first appeared in the original Treehouse of Horror 2012, as a tappable, but then he was re-added as a permanent NPC in, I think, 2015. I think that's correct. Yeah, he's very awesome. I love him a lot. you got to give mad props to the zombie, and that's Zed for zombie. So that is your APC. Just let's go through it one more time. So we've got A for Annual Giftman, B for Big Claw, C for Capital City Goofball, D for Drone, E for Egg Council Guy, F for Frog Prince, G for Gooseyus, H for Handsome Pete, I for Imaginary Bear, J for Juggler, K for King Snorky, L for Leprechaun, M for Mojo Helper Monkey, N for Northern Irish Leprechaun, O for Octoparrot, P for Pokey, Q for the Quirky Prospector, R for Ralpho Cop, S for Snowball 2, T for Tumbleweed, U for Unicorn, that's Royal, V for Vern Bully, I mean Bully Vern. W is for Whitney. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying all that. Whitney. Uh, X is for Xyloid Tree Stash. Um, y is for Yupricorn. And Z is for Zombie that does some shuffling. So that is your ABC. I hope you have learned it. I need to make sure that this video isn't marked for kids because that would be terrible. So I'm going to say a swear word now. Fuck. There you go. Because I feel like an ABC video is definitely going to be flagged for like a for kids video. So I gotta to make sure I can actually monetize this. I've just got to say some bad words. So here we go. <clears throat> Fuck. Shit. There we go. All right. This is not for kids now. There you have it. Sorry, I'm not trying to be cool and swear. I generally am doing this to make sure I can monetize it. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Tell me your thoughts and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.